let's talk toxic diet culture, myth debunking, and the food you should be eating for the most glowy skin with Emily. <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of The 411, your favorite health and wellness hub. Now, today's guest is someone I'm super excited about. We met so spontaneously at a L'Oreal event, and I knew the second I met her, I had to get her on The 411 and just pick her brain and just be in her presence because she's incredible. A BSC nutritionist, an author, a content creator. I mean, what doesn't this girl do, everyone? Emily English. Hi, everyone. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Thank you Welcome. For me on. Of course, of course. I mean, literally, like I said, I knew I had to have you on. Like, I mean, we met instantly, and it was one of those things that we just got on. Yeah, yeah. It was a spark. It was a spark. We connected. Yeah, I was proud. Claudia introduced us too. Yeah. And she was like, "You would love Emily," and I was like, "You're so right. I do love Emily." <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah, no. But to give some background, L'Oreal hosted an event specifically for skincare. But as we know. It's an all-encompassing experience. The food you eat, the water you drink, the way you move your body, it all contributes to skincare. So Emily was there as an expert talking to us about the importance of nutrition. She had these incredible smoothies that I still <laughs> rave about today. I'm like, so, so good. You had so many yummy bites that were just like, so good, so good. So from there, I was like, she, you just have to have her on. You have to have her on. Yeah. So I just want you to dive more into how you got into nutrition, what sparked this passion for nutrition um and how you got to where you are today so take us to the beginning oh god so i mean i i come from a family who are all obsessed with food okay so my granny's actually a chef oh, and wow. my first job was in her kitchen oh, so wow. i used to spend my childhood summers like peeling all the potatoes for the sunday rose <laughs> like prepping all the starters i do a little bit of waitressing mm. but i loved being in the kitchen mm. that was the thing that like, brought me so much joy and as, as a child, like, my life literally revolved around food. When I was a teenager as well, like, when the school bell used to go, I used to, like, run to the tuck shop yeah. and, like, get a little snack play. And, like, I, I, that was a part yeah, of my day like that lunch brought was. joy. But yeah. I never thought about nutrition, funnily mm. enough. Like, I wasn't someone who was, like, overtly, like, confident mm. in what I needed to fuel my body. I was quite athletic, so I knew that I needed loads of carbs mm. to be able to run and stuff. But... When it came to kind of like vitamins and, and five a day and stuff, that wasn't really on my radar. And it wasn't until I got scouted at a festival when I was 17 to become a model. Oh, wow. And suddenly I went from kind of just a, a schoolgirl doing my, my, my programs. I, I did a lot of um, science. So I, I loved science at school. To being thrown into this world of, of fashion and, and modeling and image pressure. And we all are a little bit image conscious, especially as we're growing up. But I feel like that fashion industry is a whole other ball. Game. Oh, it's a beast. It's, it's a, a whole beast. different beast, yeah. And you either you're either strong enough and you have thick enough skin, or you get chewed up as fat out. And unfortunately, I was the latter. Mm. I someone critiqued me in an agency about my thighs after a summer of travel. This is at seventeen. This is seventeen, and I would I had never ever thought of myself as like thick before and then suddenly something happened when they turned around to me and they took my polaroids and they said we're gonna have to do something about your thighs like they're not fo they're not photographing well and i remember becoming obsessed i took like so many pictures of so many different angles of my body i hyper analyzed myself and their advice to me was oh, all you need to do is is run and watch what you eat and that was the only piece of nutrition advice. I is this had. a nutritionist also, or is this no, your this agent? No, this is the agent. Run okay. and and watch what you eat. When I went onto the internet to look for inspiration, okay, healthy eating guides, how to lose weight, I was exposed to that whole arena mm. of toxic diet culture. Mm. And I lost so much weight in the most restrictive, controlling way possible. I couldn't, I refused to eat my mum's food anymore. Oh. I would come home and she would make something for me that was made from love. It mm. was homemade. It mm. was packed full of goodness. And it would be something homely. It would be like a lasagna. It yeah. would be a, a pie. And I would say to my mom, I can't eat this. This is making me fat. And I suddenly lost all of this connection. And food became this whole enemy for me. And it was awful. Like yeah. I, I didn't eat bread. I didn't eat pasta. I had no sugar. I, I convinced myself I had, had like this whole host of like illnesses mm. and th like this was like it got in the mind got in point. the mind yeah. really and 
it brought it took it took everything away from me. Like, were your took, parents aware of what the agency had said to you? I don't think fully. Okay. But like, did they know what sparked this like change? Yes, they did. Okay. And they didn't want me to do it anymore. But and I actually left the modeling industry. Like, okay. I got to it got to a point one day where I had. A, a proper mental breakdown and I knew that this wasn't what I wanted my life to be mm. and it was that decision that I, I sought therapy and I did a lot of work and healed my relationship with food but then realized as someone who loves chemistry someone who loves biology I had no idea what food does to my body mm. and it was that moment I was already I deferred university a couple of years to model it was that moment that I was like do you know what I'm going to go to university and I'm going to study nutrition because I need to know about this. And wow. The rest is history, really. Yeah, here you are today. Yeah. Wait, so do you feel like who helped you seek the, like, aspiring for higher education? Was it, did you go to a therapist and eventually work through? Because it takes time. I feel like you talked about it so eloquently, but to really unlearn these toxic ideas that the agency taught you, that the internet taught you, it takes time, you know what I mean? Years. Okay. Absolutely years. And that behavioral change, it, like, even though I was working towards a healthier relationship with food, that is a journey. Mm. And you are kidding yourself if you think that you would just wake up one day and be like, do you know what? I'm kind of done with these diet rules. Mm. They will haunt you. Mm. And there's even moments now where like you'll, you'll do something or I'll, I'll do something or, and you'll get that twang, like twing of like guilt. Yeah. Yeah. And the most important thing is that you recognize that it's not you. Mm. It's not your voice and it's not what, you want to do and brings you joy it's a natural part of like why do, why do we look in the mirror sometimes and talk down to ourselves mm. why why are we negative why do we have some self-loathing like it, it is part of our human nature totally to be a bit mean to ourselves yeah sometimes. and to critique ourselves, critique ourselves yeah, yeah. But we've got to keep it in check mm. and that's the best thing that therapy's done mm. is therapy keeps that part of my brain in check i love that do you still go to therapy today every single week or not every single week anymore every other week i love that i love yeah. that I've never, we've never openly talked about like therapy on the okay. podcast. So I love that you so eloquently brought that up. And I agree with you. I grew up with a, my grandma has studied in the therapy field. So I feel like for me, it was normal. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you need to talk to someone, you go. But as I got older, I realized so many people don't normalize that. You know what I mean? Or and it's like stigmatized. Thing. And I'm like, there's you, nothing wrong with talking to a third party person. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be ill. That's my point. So then you're studying nutrition. At College of London, right? At uh, King's College London, yeah. I did my three-year BSc. Yes. Um, came out of it the other end, and I was obsessed with personalized nutrition. Okay. I think that we all have such a unique identity in food, and I didn't actually like this blanket approach to nutrition. Mm. This, oh, one-size-fits-all mm. nutritional advice. And I actually love to try and empower any of I've worked with to carve out their own journey in nutrition mm. what does nutrition mean to you what makes you happy what makes you thrive mm. because what you need is so different to what i need totally and that's okay so that's why when we live in this like world of comparison especially on social media and we often will see a lot of examples of what people eat mm. i don't ever want people to compare themselves mm. to that pattern but rather seek inspiration yeah totally so you brought up a great point i talk about there's so many what i eat in a day videos yeah online and like you said they're not wrong but i think for there's a lot of people who don't know how to take what they need to take from each video so what would be advice you give especially even to your clients to know like how do i know what's best for me what are steps people can take to discover what their body needs and what's the right nutritional plan for them mm -hmm. if they can't hypothetically maybe afford a personal one-on-one -on -one consultant or yeah so tune into how you feel okay food has a massive impact on how you feel emotionally and also physically mm. and if you're doing something and you're starving you're weak you're run down and you feel like it's not sustainable then that is not the right pattern for you mm. and there are some people out there who will go animal based and it works for them really really well there are some people who go who go out there and want to be vegan it works really really well for them it's it's okay to be you yeah. and to explore you. Yeah. And I actually think the world of food social media is incredible. I get so much inspiration for from the amazing content creators out there. A lot of the amazing kind of health coaches out there as well who are kind of really like pouring out positive self-love messaging. Mm. And you just have to kind of attach to it 
in a way that enables you to kind of grow and feel like the best version of yourself mm. rather than aspiring to be someone else. Mm. I think about adding to you yeah. rather than trying to change and strip away from you. Okay. And would you say that takes trial and error, like trying things and seeing how it makes you feel? A hundred percent. Okay. But it also can just be small changes. Okay. So if you think about making a breakfast plate, if you're someone who wakes up every single morning and you have maybe like a couple of scrambled eggs on toast, why not make your toast a whole grain or a seeded one? Okay. Why not add some tomatoes and spinach in there? Okay. Can you like maybe cook your eggs with a bit of extra virgin olive oil to get in all of those healthy fats? Mm. Like, think about those small changes you can make to the things you already know. Okay. And that will make a huge difference to your health. Okay, okay. My next question, you have to promise not to scream at me, but <laughs> okay. is breakfast really the most important meal of the day? Oh, do you know what? It's I think it's a bit of a like a media okay. slogan tagline. Okay. If you are not hungry for breakfast, you do not have to eat breakfast. That's okay. I'm never hungry for breakfast. Yeah. And I can't tell it's because I start it's if it's because I start my day with a matcha yeah. or like a cappuccino. You know what I mean? But so then it's like so you're still having something. So you're, oh, okay. You're still, it's a, you're still having a little bit of energy with yeah. Her. So yeah. do you have milk in it? Yeah, oat milk, but exactly. So okay. Essentially, you're and I have earlier lunches. Yeah. Okay. So it it doesn't matter. So okay. if you a lot of people stress as females, if you exercise in the morning, training fasted can sometimes cause a little bit of hormonal issues. Mm. But I would only address that if you're having hormonal symptoms. Yeah. And you're skipping breakfast and doing hit training in the morning. Okay. And you're like, yeah. Oh, I wonder why I feel like this. It's like, oh, maybe we need to talk about this. Yeah. But if you're fine, fit, healthy, energetic, and your hormones are in check, yeah. and you're not hungry for breakfast, you do not have to eat breakfast. Amazing. That's good to know because that's. I feel like that was the only one part I had my personal question. Because you're right. <laughs> I have my matcha, then I go to Pilates, yeah. and I feel great. But you're right. There's so much advertising out there that's like you didn't have your breakfast you didn't have your breakfast and i'm like i can see even we went away for new year's eve to the countryside and they were like your breakfast you don't want the breakfast and i'm like i don't want the breakfast and i yeah. like can't even pinpoint like i know i'm not an unhealthy you know what i mean mindset eater but in so i wanted to just clarify like is that just me or and i know a ton of people who are like me who are like no i know what you mean like and lunch is my favorite time of the day so yeah. it's like when it is lunchtime i just get so excited to make a really like you said healthy packed meal so yeah. my next question would be I always learn, I've learned before, and this is true, to shop by color. So when I'm shopping for vegetables, okay. So what does that exactly do? I don't really know what I'm, I'm always like, purples, <laughs> greens, oranges, but like. I love that, star student. Okay. There you go, A okay. plus. Guys, A. <laughs> <laughs> so I always say color, not calories. Okay. And what color indicates is basically all of the natural compounds in our plant-based foods, which have different health benefits. Okay. So if you eat by color, you can pretty much kind of be confident in the fact you're getting everything in that you need. Okay. And color is also indicative of these things called polyphenols. It sounds like a bit of a fancy word, mm. but polyphenols are these things in our food that they're above vitamins. They're not vitamin B, vitamin D, vitamin C. These are these highly potent antioxidant compounds. Mm. And this is what we associate with things like longevity, anti-aging, mm. anti-cancerous effects. Mm. So if we're thinking about staying as healthy for long as possible, packing in more color often means packing in more polyphenols too. Okay. Um, like even the, the red compounds and things like tomatoes okay, um, okay. and stuff are, are really, really good for you. Really anti-cancerous, really anti-inflammatory. Those purples in our beetroots. Mm. Um, like cabbage. Purple cabbage. Okay. They contain these um, vasodilators. Okay. I'm getting a bit sciencey here, but I was gonna say college grad. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess university here. I always use the word college, and everyone's like yeah, college. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. I, like, I've um, but like these these cause vasodilation, which actually help deliver nutrients around your body. So if okay. you think about skin health, okay, that was gonna be my next question. Keeping your health, yeah. in your skin, yeah. via all those purple foods, mm. and you have a good, well balanced diet, you're gonna be getting maximum delivery to to your skin. Okay, I mean, you took us right there. Everyone on this channel oh, knows I'm a skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm a huge skincare girly. Yeah. It's like how I've made my career. I mean, I'm just so fortunate. Like you, I started out modeling, but I'm so thankful that I kind of segue into the beauty lane because yeah. I did like a few weeks of, you know what I mean, full body. And I could so quickly, you just see how toxic it can become. And it's like, oh, yeah. and it's scary, but I feel honored and blessed that I stepped into the beauty and skincare. And so I'm a huge advocate for skincare. I feel like that's honestly what sparked me to even start looking at nutrition and food mm. because when you learn there's a direct correlation to like the glow you have, the skin you have, you know what I mean? So I would love for you to just dive deeper into the foods that encourage, like you said, anti-aging, glowing skin, hydrated skin, and like yeah. what's your relationship of skin to skincare, all the good stuff. 
So when it comes to skin, we have to think about foods that support different areas of the skin. Mm. So obviously the skin is basically in layers. So you've got the structural layer, then you've got like the upper layer, you've got the waxy layer. And what we want to focus on is building good structure via collagen. Mm. Then we want to focus on keeping a good barrier, reducing water loss and keeping kind of like that lovely fatty waxy layer on the skin to, mm. to kind of seal everything in. Mm. Most of it, and one of the most important things to think about is your gut. Okay. Because your gut and your skin are very highly, um, very closely linked. Okay. So when we have poor gut health, um, poor gut health can mean low bacterial diversity. So we're not having enough of the, the good guys versus the bad guys. This can disrupt our gut barrier. The same with our skin barrier. If, mm. we, if we impair our skin barrier function, we are, we're more open to things like dermatitis, mm. acne, irritation, pollution. When we impair our gut barrier, we also get this upregulation of inflammation. Mm. So when we wear it down, when we're not having enough fiber, we're, we're not sleeping properly, we're stressing, we're drinking too much. This inflammation will then start to feed back negatively to the skin and drive inflammation within the skin. So if we make sure that we have a good, diverse, colored diet, high in fiber, support that gut barrier function, you immediately support your overall skin health. So okay. that's kind of rule number one. So gut health is first. Gut health, okay. look after your gut. Okay. Then when it comes to actually eating for the skin, all of those antioxidants I'm okay. talking about. So vitamin C is integral for collagen production. Mm. So the more vitamin C we can get alongside a, like a, a balanced, diverse, protein-focused diet can actually help improve and maintain that collagen in within the skin mm. and antioxidants also help prevent collagen breakdown okay, so you have to think of okay. collagen as like this cycle we want to maintain it mm. but we want to prevent its breakdown have you ever noticed if you're stressed or don't sleep well you, like your skin literally looks older oh in, right, in away. Day. right away right it's, away it's scary it's like really scary and yeah. that's because you're encouraging that collagen breakdown mm. so if you have a diet that is really high in the colors mm you can be sure that you're getting in all of those antioxidants. And one of my favorite little stats is that a red pepper or a red bell pepper yeah. um, contains more vitamin C than an orange. Really? So I didn't know that. about getting more vitamin C into your diet, chop up a red wow. pepper, put it into your salads, put it I into did not your spaghetti know that. Nose. There you go. Fact wow. of the day. Wow, that's good to know. Really yeah. good. And then the final thing is your fats. Okay. So um, omega-3 fats, brilliant in things like chia and linseed okay. can actually help upregulate the um, the kind of like oil production within the skin but in a way that helps reduce trans epidermal water loss okay so that's basically the loss of water from the skin which can make your skin feel a little bit more dehydrated mm. and flaky so if we're thinking about what a hyaluronic acid does mm. we really want to help lock in that locked in water mm. and that's why we put a hyaluronic acid serum on first and then a sealant yeah. and then we put the barrier yeah. and then we put the ceramide to yeah. lock everything in the the foods that are high in those omega-3 fatty acids um and anti-inflammatory fats are brilliant at locking in and preserving that barrier function okay wow good to know i was i should be hosting but i was so intently just listening <laughs> i was like no. how can i have the best glowing skin because your skin is like radiating it's really glowing until I'm always just curious. For that good food. I mean, look at yours though. Come on. I'll be good, but I invest a lot of time. Like I'm <laughs> like, people are always like, you have the nicest skin, and I'm like, oh, thank you. I am honored, but I do feel like last year I really made a shift. Like you said, yeah. there's a shift that happens yeah. where I think you're doing something and you're kind of naturally good at it, and mm -hmm. you have a natural gravitation to it, and then there comes a time where you're like, okay, the natural gravitation is there. And now we fully, you know what I mean? Yeah. Dive in, do our research, understand why. I just think the key about it here is understanding why everything works the way it works and yeah. i feel like you touched on that so well about why you even sought out a degree in nutrition you know what i mean um i'm curious though going to school for nutrition what are things that you feel you took from it that maybe other people might not have not have had access to if they just got the certificate or if they're maybe self-taught there's so many like youtube academy yeah. graduates out here um, so it's being able to be critical of the scientific evidence okay so a lot of us will read something or hear something from someone and take it as gospel okay and this is what i don't like about the health industry there are too many like Plans. yeah it's yeah. like i'm this person or i'm this yeah, person yeah i'm anti this or i'm pro this yes whereas wow. people aren't sitting there with rational like like diplomatic minds and because i am a scientist at heart yeah i will always scientifically critique yeah any sort of evidence that comes out yeah and you're looking for the truth i'm looking for the truth yeah and so much with nutritional research is we think yeah. Or this is associated like with... Like theoretical. It's all theoretical. Yeah. So when it actually comes to confidence in saying this does this, 
it's very hard to find that confidence. Mm. So we really just need to like focus on the things that like the basic things that we know, but they're not sexy enough. Mm. They don't sell. Mm. So you have to bear in mind that the things that are buzzwordy, like get your attention. Mm. Like clickbaity. Clickbaity. What's their selling point? Mm. What are they trying to make you buy? What are they trying to make you do? And if it's something that preys into your insecurities, then I would run. Mm. But I am a massive fan of like wellness micro habits. But you're so right. I It's kind of sad because I battle with this all the time as well. Even as a skincare content creator, you know what I mean? There's when you learn the truth, you're so privileged. Even going to the L'Oreal event, I mm. learned so much. I thought I knew so much. And then you learn even more. And you want to come to your audience and share. But in the same time, I'm like, I want the video to do well. But you can't even think like that. You know what I mean? You have to just organically speak. But I do feel sometimes when you organically speak and give the truth. I'm not even a scientist. I'm definitely yeah. more. I studied more like international relations. I was definitely the theoretical girl in school. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's an active challenge to be like, Kiki, what is the truth and what is the facts? Because I definitely was the girl that <laughs> you're talking about being like, this is what they're saying is good. I do this. This is what they're saying is good. I do this. And like, I feel like I had to be told, you know what I mean? Like everything isn't going to work for everyone. You need to decide what works for you. Exactly. And I... If you are someone who wants to make a conscious decision of what you will not put in your body, mm. it's your body. You can do that. That's absolutely fine. Mm. But if I choose to put something in my body that you don't agree with, that is not your problem. Yeah. It's and don't criticize. Opinion. Don't criticize. Yeah. And this is the thing that I really hate. It's like, I dislike when people, they'll come to me and they'll be like, well, why are you using that? I'm like, you're not thinking about the bigger picture. Mm. Like, I eat. I eat a white bagel, A, because it's delicious. Mm. I love bagels. Mm. Not everything has to be the best, yeah. healthiest version yeah. for it to be good for you. Yeah. Because what am I putting on that bagel? I'm putting like an amazing beetroot spread. That's yeah. Full of or like a spinach. You did like a pea spread. And I was like, oh my God, that's exactly. getting any healthier than that. Yeah. But that's how, that's what you have to think. It's like diet context. Yeah. And the overall pattern of what you're eating. Yeah. Not demonizing these singular things. Yeah. I also feel like balance is so important. Like, I don't know, but I, I've also done those kind of like strict, you remove everything that you love yeah. diets and like you probably the skinniest you've ever been, but you're right. You feel so weak. You yeah. feel horrible. Whereas I'm like, that's not a life you want to live. I think that's what it came down to. Even for me where I was like, are you happy right now? Where like yeah. everyone's ordering food that you want to eat, but you're not eating it. You know what I mean? And you, you convince yourself like, oh, I don't want that. But of course you want, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who doesn't want a bagel? I mean, I'm from New York city. Who, no Best one, bagels no, literally. Ever. I'm like, who doesn't ever. want a bagel? You're like, you're lying to yourself when you're yeah. saying you don't want it. So you're so right where I think balance and so is, is so important and when you I think when you stay true to certain elements of your wellness experience you won't feel bad you know what I mean eating the bagel and all yeah. that kind of stuff but I think it's when the balance goes out of skew like you said maybe you're drinking too much maybe you're out super late you know what I mean? it doesn't always have to be what you're putting in your body I think about like Kiki back in the days when you used to party if you're out till 3 a.m you know, of course you're gonna feel crap you know what I mean eating x y and z in the morning because it all works in works together you know but that's the thing with wellness like wellness is meant to make you feel well yeah exactly exactly like, physically yeah. and mentally and to feel well you have to feel unwell you know what yeah. i mean like it's a it's a cycle exactly no and it's like, so true i love wellness yeah i like give me the green juice yes yes give me like the powder yes. like, they want wellness supplement routine. yeah and i'm yeah. like oh my god i'm just such a wellness yeah girl. i love yes habits. yes they make me feel good yeah but like i don't do that like worrying over worrying yeah. about what I'm doing yeah. it adds to my life of course so any wellness any routine my Pilates is my life oh, I yes. love the reformer yes. that's the way the reformer moving. we love the. You know, I'm so no. mad I didn't know you for the launch of this because we had our launch party at Nobu Pilates and it was like what? I wanted everyone I was like I need to show everyone and so many I was so proud I was like how many people have been to reformer and only one person so I was showing Stop all those people reformer Pilates have and I was like yet? no I started off at the one uh, I can't remember the name. I went from there to the Nobu, which was like such a big jump. The one I used to start off with was, I don't know why I'm blanking the name, Frame. Oh, okay. Hopefully Frame is not yeah, listening. Yeah. But, and they were like fine. But I used to go to Body Rock. I don't know if you know Body Rock in New York no. City. In incredible. Oh, that's like Carp. That's the Mega Reformer. Is that a Mega yes, Reformer yes, one? Yes, yes, Yeah, that's Okay, Carp. so maybe I will like Carp. Because I think I went from there to Frame and I was like, what is not, it? Yeah, I, it wasn't that it was a downgrade. It was like, I'm leaving still able to like feel like I could do five more of these and yeah. that's not the point of a Pilates class for me, you know what I mean? Carl, I collapsed onto the bed at the end. Okay. Thinking, oh my God, I made it. Well, because you have 40, I'm like, I have 45 minutes to dedicate myself yeah. to this 
exercise and for me it's mental you know what i mean and it's like if i don't feel challenged yeah. and the mate brain didn't do what it needed to do okay i'm gonna check out cars now i'll take you okay okay thank it's you it's quite far away from you though that's the only thing i mean i'm down to travel i mean okay. noble's in marleborn marleborn is that yeah it? yeah marleborn, so yeah. from here that's definitely like yeah 35 minute car ride you know what i mean so not too bad. i will yeah yeah not horrible but i will for pilates i will do it because it's like what you said you just feel so amazing like but it, you're right, it is the mental strength. Yeah. Like, the mental strength that I've been able to, like, pass over into everything else I do in my life through doing something like that yeah. is amazing. The discipline, the, like, yeah. structure. You, uh, If you've never been to Rapport Pilates, this Go is your sign. Yeah. This is somehow turned into Rapport Pilates. But I also just think, I'm not sure if you know, but the 401, we have five wellness pillars. And that's why it was so important for me to include all these pillars because – again, the whole idea of wellness, it's not one entity, you know what I mean? There's so many things that have to be working together. Yeah. And the key part of what you said is you have to be having fun while doing it. Like, I feel like I get so many questions being like, how do you remember to wake up and make that cook that? How do you remember to go to Pilates? And I'm like, because it's just fun for me, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. my body wakes up excited to just like yeah. get on the reformer and like, cause the f I think that's the feeling you get after, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the commonality with all these things. Once you eat an amazing lunch, you feel incredible. Mm -hmm. Once you do an amazing workout, you feel, once I do a skincare routine, I feel on top of the world, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like if you're not really sure where to begin, you know what I mean? If you're in the beginning of your journey, because I remember what it was like when I first, first, first started my wellness journey, you're kind of so low that you like don't even know what to look for. And I feel like you have to do those small changes. And when you start to feel happier and feel better about yourself, that's your answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. You will continue to seek that. I guess feeling is the word. Yeah. Massively so. And that is why I always preach those micro, micro habits. Yeah. Because if you start by committing yourself to wake up every single day and having a big glass of water. Yeah. And before your coffee, it's so small. Yeah. But give yourself a month. Changes. Huge and it changes. will make a huge change. Yes. No, totally. My grandma was such an advocate for that. She's who like inspired. My mom and grandma inspired on my skincare by like. Yeah they don't use half the products I use and yeah. they still look younger than me. And I'm like, what's going on? They're like, water. Did you drink your water? And it's true. Water yeah. will heal the body from yeah. the inside out. And it's like, it's incredible. It's miraculous. Um, I, honestly, it's one of the biggest things that people do not do enough of. No, they don't. Water. They don't. I also heard on this other podcast that it takes, I think it was 60 days for a habit to form. Yeah. So if you just do something, drink the water for 60 days straight, <laughs> you won't even realize. You're just like, yeah. it becomes natural habit. You know what I mean? And it goes back to what you're saying, habits. I feel like, it's hard to unlearn bad habits, but mm -hmm. once you secure those new ones, I mean, you're smooth sailing. Literally. You're on top of the world. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Okay, well, the last thing I kind of wanted to segue into is I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions with nutrition. You talked about it. I feel like you, like, touched lightly on it about mm -hmm. the fad diets and the toxic diet culture, but I want you to dive into specifics because I feel like people sometimes don't even know that they're participating yeah. in misconceptions and, like, not the best – habits you know what I mean yeah so I want you to just maybe talk about some that come to mind right away and let's just debunk them right now <laughs> so shut it down first one has to be the carbs yeah so carbs do not make you fat okay we have enough evidence to show that when protein and calories are matched in a diet the ratio of carbs to fat does not matter mm. so you could eat all of your your calories from fats and have the same protein and, and the same overall caloric intake or all of your calories from carbs with the same protein and that that same matched calorie intake and there'll be no difference mm. no metabolic difference mm. and i think it, there obviously will be some sort of like metabolic differences for digestion and and insulin and all, all those bits and bobs in between but this thing <laughs> that carbs are the reason why people are, are struggling with metabolic disorders is false. Mm. The only thing is, is carbs are often much easier to overeat. Mm. So if you think about eating a whole avocado, you're like, oh my God, I was rich. Like, I yeah. can't really eat much more. Yeah. But if it's just like a lovely bowl of spaghetti. You're like, going to say a plate of pasta. <laughs> Not a problem. Infinite. <laughs> infinite. So there are obviously like things that we like should be aware of there. If you are someone who is like like worried or fearing carbs like you don't need to be scared of okay. them they're an amazing carbs are, the, are our main brain fuel okay so if you're thinking about staying alert and focused and energized okay. maximizing like whole grain high fiber lovely nourishing carbs that also contain lots of 
hormone helping vitamins. Yeah. There's lots of B vitamins, lots of zinc, lots of magnesium, all those things yeah. found in our in our carbs as well. Legumes. Okay. Even though they're a form of protein, they're also a brilliant form of carbs. Okay. And they're one of the number one f- uh, f- uh, foods for our gut. Mm. So it's going to support your skin and, yeah, eat okay. the carbs. If you want to yeah. glow, eat the carbs. Yeah. And then I'm, I want to kind of address seed oils as okay. well. I think it's something that's really, really hot topic at the moment. And unless you're drinking like a whole litre of barista oat milk a day or like you're just glugging like really old sunflower oil that you've yeah. had like sitting in the sunlight or yeah. whatever, you do not need to like look at the back of the pack and see that there's like rapeseed oil in something and being like, oh, I cannot eat that, that's yeah. bad for me. That is not true. Yeah. Diet context. If I'm making a salad, I'm not going to be dressing it with sunflower oil i'm going to be dressing with extra virgin olive oil because it tastes better it's full of better things and that is my oil of preference but if my granola that i pick up for like that's my favorite granola contains a sunflower oil it's it's not this (gasps) yeah my god yeah we just need to calm down yeah there is no evidence no conclusive evidence that those seed oils are inflammatory in the way that they're being suggested to be Mm. most substitutions of high processed animal fat diets with a plant or a seed oil shows reduction of inflammation markers anyway oh wow especially in things like um our heart health yeah so it's not something that i would be overtly concerned about a lot of us will may maybe have like out of balance ratios Mm. that's the one thing that we do have to think about if we're not getting in enough omega-3s versus the the types of omegas that are in um and, and fats that are in the, the seed oil i was gonna say i'm new to the seed oil thing so is that okay. why, why are people not wanting to eat it they think it's fat fattening it, no they think it's really inflammatory and it's causing like it's oh. basically the new i'm trying to think what the previous like demonization was was it carbs no it was something else but i, can't I feel remember. like carbs has been around since like oh, no. everyone's time it was butter so you know oh, everyone's okay. like eat butter only and don't have any other oils Oh, I don't remember that. No, do you not remember? Clearly, we're in like. The, the, <laughs> now I'm gonna just go into your phone and be like butter, 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 seed oil, <laughs> seed oil, seed oil, and it all come up to your your profile. But yeah, people are people will come to me and like message me and be like, "You're such a terrible nutritionist. I can't believe you have to use that product. It contains seed oils." I'm like, people say that to you all the time. They they will literally tell me off for like going to the pub and having a pint. Oh my god. Like, are bad. these followers or other nutritionists? No, they're just like random trolls. Oh, okay. That's crazy. But I, I mean, I've got very, very good at just deleting and blocking. Yeah, I mean, because. Well, first of all, you're like, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> so <laughs> let's start off with that. Yeah. Second of all, like, who. Like, what? Opinion. People's opinions on yeah. what you eat is. I just don't like. But they do it to everyone. Yeah, no, and, totally, totally. And trolls are a thing. Trolls, my dad yeah. always says that. He's like, the only thing everyone in this world can afford is an opinion so you let yeah. him have it and i'm like yeah. that's so true once he said that it like nice. changed my no literally when he said it one day i was like wow <laughs> like because obviously we all get comments but the way he said it that way i was like you I see them now that. no i know no I, I say it to everyone because i'm like when you hear it i feel like when you read it now to you i'm like good that's the only thing you can afford to have you yeah. have that but it's crazy but uh, yeah it's the the seed oil thing i think is something that needs to go to bed yeah so eat the seed oils eat the butter i mean come on just balance yeah balance literally balanced, balanced. High quality fats in things like extra virgin olive oils, our nuts and seeds, um, uh, avocados, bits and bobs like that. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. But if you're literally having a little bit of exposure to something that is a little bit more processed, in the context of a plant focused diet, mm. you do not need to worry. Okay. Like there hasn't been any studies that have, same with like artificial sweeteners. They are not something that I actively seek out mm. to like consume, but if they are in something, I'm not going to like panic and think, wow, this is going to ruin my gut health. Mm. There hasn't been a single study that's shown the intake of like a, a protein shake with an artificial sweetener in that's been blended with blueberries and spinach mm. and flaxseed and chia. <laughs> and, and it's like, so what does that do to yeah. your gut? Show me yeah. that micro mini minuscule exposure yeah. to the gut microbiome with all of that fiber and color yeah. diversity versus a mouse that has been pumped with basically liquid artificial sweetener <laughs> and then people being like oh, look this um, yeah. this look at this new study that's come out to show this i'm like it just doesn't show anything yeah but that's the science in you i think people what's sad is they don't have the background mm. and they don't even have the critical lens mindset to be like again let me seek the truth you know yeah. what i mean and i feel like nutrition and all, all everything in life but i think specifically nutrition because i mean false eating habits have like plagued the world i'm not even gonna say america i'm thinking of america but the world you know what i mean for so long that i feel like it's gonna take 
generations to really unlearn what we've been taught you know what i mean Mm. um i feel like oh go ahead i was gonna say do you feel like a lot of identity and culture has been stripped away from food though because i know so many of my friends who are too busy to cook now yeah like they they don't like spend the time and they don't even have like the facilities or the pots and the pans Mm. to make the recipes that they grew up on yeah and i find that really sad that we have this sometimes like disconnect with nutrition and food because it's not just nutrients it's also like love yeah and it's memories and it's moments that we share yeah I'm so keen. I, I mean, it's why I put out content that I do and I create recipes that I do because they're designed to bring people joy mm. and make people feel good, but also they're for, like, families and mm. they're to sit down with friends yeah. and they're to eat together. Yeah. No, I mean, I feel like I definitely come from a unique perspective because I was born and raised in New York City. Yeah. And I think the culture of New York City is a huge eat-out culture. Yeah. We don't really... I remember when my family would cook, it was the way people react to when their families eat out. We'd be like, oh, my God, we have a home-cooked meal. Like, it was a celebration really? because, like... Yeah, because no one had time. where Everyone's working. So it's like... And I, I feel like it was only when I came to Europe for study abroad, I studied abroad in Italy, that I really learned the power of, like, what you're talking about. Like, yeah. the joy that comes from food and, like, seeing my host mom in the kitchen preparing them. I mean, no one does love them better than the Italians, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, what, how she would pour it into it and show that to me. I remember I went back to America being like, I want to start cooking. Like, I'm yeah. really in love with what I saw. And I think that's a hard one to shift in New York City because it's oversaturated with yeah. restaurants. And not just the, any restaurants, the best of the best restaurants. And then... That also also goes down the line of you don't know what people are using. That's mm. what really I love so much about cooking is I know exactly what's going into my meals. I know the setting it was made in. I know the cleanliness. And when you're eating out, you don't really know at the end of the day what's going on back there. And you know I, I mean? I've like, worked in kitchens, and I had a delivery kitchen during lockdown with other delivery kitchens in there. And it was, they were bad. And the things oh, that I witnessed, that. I, like, that. I would only order something that I know has been like nuked in the oven. Like if I'm getting a pizza, yes, yeah. I know it's going into like a yeah, three it kills all the bacteria. By <laughs> wood fired oven, I'm just like anything that they've touched is, is going to burn. But yeah, it makes me like. Eesh. But oh, I gosh. also I also just want to say like if someone does want to make certain dietary choices for them, like that's not a problem. Yeah. Like with if if someone actually does like to buy their meal prepped in, eat yeah. out all the time, like avoid artificial sweeteners. Yeah. That is so okay yeah like do you yeah but don't push your opinion on other people people and try and make them feel bad totally and i think you're just fine you have to make time for what you want to make time for you know i I feel like especially in new york everyone's like we don't have time we don't have time and i'm like yeah but we've all been out for drinks for the last five hours you know what i mean we could have been home cooking you know or change the culture do you see this trending thing on social media it's like in for 2024 out for 2024 yeah yeah and i love a common in i've been seeing is making dinner with my friends over eating out and i was like i love that i love that it's one so we have a couple of our best friends joel and steph and our favorite thing to do with them is go over there. I always bring the food. Yeah. They always do the cocktails. So we've got Mexican night in a few weeks. Yeah. And we're going to be doing like full like pulled lamb tacos, yeah. homemade Ooh, fresh God. salsas, like all the corn tortillas. Please post that recipe. I will post okay. it. Okay. That sounds like, incredible. In and he's doing like all the spi- spicy margs. And oh. we just go over. Yeah. And we sit and we cook. And yeah. Like that culture for me is so beautiful and so nourishing. And mm. I think it's part of what a balanced idea of nutrition and yeah. eating is for me. It's, yeah. It's you're making it a memory. It's, it's a memory. Yeah. No, you're so right. You're so right. I also I credit London for that because I definitely do that more here and yeah. I feel like people are like, oh, like the, there's a constant New York London battle and I'm like, you know what? London really brought out a side of me that I really don't think New York could and yeah. it's like, I generally love hosting. You know what I mean? Like, I love having everyone over. I love to cook and I'm just so grateful. You know what I mean? Because I think there's a very encouraging culture here to stay home and to hang out with your people and to make food and to just enjoy you know what i mean and it always just tastes so much better too <laughs> like it really when does. you make it yourself like it really does apart from there are some restaurants who are just like i don't know what they do to their food yeah just like but then it, it makes it more special because like i feel like when you're eating out you know you're going to like yeah. the one of the ones you know what i mean yeah. who make them so special and make them so unique and so. sometimes you just don't need the washing up yeah so yeah exactly like, you oh, just, like, so just want to nice. be blind and die <laughs> yeah. oh my god the washing up is genuinely the worst part can't even talk about that well imagine how much i do yeah I feel, you do <laughs> babe i feel like five recipes a day my, oh my dishwasher is wow. just like constantly in rotation oh my gosh that's a lot of recipes it's a lot wow yeah. do you feel like it's hard to film i feel like we didn't talk about the content creation too much do you feel like it's hard to film food videos 
I love it. Yeah. It, it comes so naturally and organic to me. Like it's, it's a full passion of mine. Like when yeah. I create a recipe in my brain, I'm so excited to make it, to film it, to edit it, and like to put it out there yes. for everyone who follows me. Yeah. Like it genuinely brings me joy to see my community make my food. Yeah. And like give them the experience too yeah. and everything. You're also really good at making the dish. I, I said this earlier, but making the dish approachable. Because yeah. when you did your curry dish, I was like, oh my God, I could do that. Like, yeah. And even the way you wrote down the ingredients, everything. I just love it. I feel it's like simple. that's what attracted me the most to you because it's very approachable. Um, uh, well, it's food that I make. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm busy. Yeah. And sometimes I try and think of, okay, I've just walked through my door. It's half six at night. I'm yeah. really tired. The idea of like getting a full shop is yeah. just like <laughs> not, not in the not cards. The vibe. Yeah. What can I get from like my really like local little express mm. store? What can I throw together in not normally in one pot because I don't want to have like a million pots going. Mm. And that's where like most of my recipes come from pain points in the mm. day. So if I'm sitting on a train and I know that I've got like a three hour journey and it's like ATM, I'm like I'm not hungry at that time, but I'm gonna be hungry in an hour. What can I pack and take? Mm. Like, what can I prep? What can I store? What can I freeze? All those things mm. are really important. Amazing, and that's probably why it translates to your cooking because yeah. you generally are busy. Yeah, you know, and even boss handling business, and you just gotta, gotta do, do what it. you need to do. Yeah, exactly. I love. That. And I, I, I don't have time to be like baking bread and stuff. Oh my god! I remember when like Martha Stewart. N- no offense. If you're a Martha Stewart cook, there's no offense to that. But you know, I remember when she was on her rise, and I was like, who has time to be doing all this? Like down to like the little oils and everything. And I was like, who generally has time? But well, unless you stay at home, unless like you are like responsible, I guess. I guess it's probably like housewife culture. No, no, that it? is a housewife. That's yeah. literally what a housewife is. Like, yeah. because I just think you're, it's a full, like I'm not discrediting. It's a full-time job to make a whole meal and like be responsible for a home. But I think that's why she kind of like, she was like yeah. the God of the housewives. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's, who, who else could have time? They, they saw themselves in her but that's what i'm saying like i feel like it's very refreshing as, as someone who like you we're very busy we don't have time but i also still want to be home i still want to cook my meals yeah i still want to nourish my body i feel like it was refreshing to meet that someone fine like balance yeah, yeah of like someone who does both get you yeah. someone who can do both you know what i mean amen amen i feel like that is such a great place to wrap i mean do you have anything i think to? it flowed gorgeously amazing I, I think whoever listens to that i think they'll take so much from it oh my god i love that and if you guys have any more questions obviously comment them and let us know and we can always re you know what i mean have another conversation yeah, That's how to be an episode. To yeah yeah but oh well thank you so thank much for you. coming on and everyone emily the incredible <laughs> Also, her cookbook is officially out to pre-order. It comes out May the 9th, but trust me, as someone who's so picky about the meals I make, and I'm just like, I don't mean to be critical, but I can be a little critical, but like, <laughs> I was obsessed with all your recipes. Thank so you, you want to get her book. You can get it on Amazon, right? Yeah. Pre-order it. Comes out on May 9th. Check her out. Follow her on all her socials, at M the Nutritionist, and... Just get on the wave, everyone. You need to be doing what you need to be doing, especially for the beginning of the year. Get the year started early. So amazing. Thanks for coming on the 411 and see you guys next week. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, August 29th. There will never be a Tuesday, August 29th, 2023. Actually, there will never be this moment or this second or this hour. Be positive. Be happy. Drink your water. Be joyful. Be thankful. Do not compare yourself to others. The goal in life is to define what makes you happy is you against you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching another episode of The 411. I will never stop saying thank you for you guys' endless support. And just a reminder, when you press subscribe, it does so much for the podcast, for me as a brand. And so please don't forget to press subscribe, leave thoughts about the way the episode made you feel, and show that love. So thank you so much.